few months ago from this desk, I talked about the results of a recall election in San Francisco. In February, a multilingual, multi-ethnic coalition in San Francisco stood up for common sense and rejected three members of the far left school board that had prioritized woke lunacy over the basics of education. Well, last week, these same fed up citizens provided a sequel. Even the deep blue Bay Area decided they'd had enough, enough, with their radical left district attorney, a prosecutor in name only, who'd become nationally famous for running a soft on crime experiment. As deaths from drug overdoses skyrocketed, his office chose to almost entirely stop prosecuting drug dealing. Burglaries shot up 50%. Chain stores had to close locations because of rampant shoplifting. One person who'd been arrested five times in six months in 2020 was let out every time, every single time, until he killed two women with a stolen car. Liberals actually bragged about how they'd cut down incarceration rates, even as disorder swallowed up more and more of the city. So the citizens were fed up, fed up with being the far left's guinea pigs. They flocked to the ballot box and they voted for change. So Mr. President, this phenomenon is not only playing out in San Francisco, it's nationwide, nationwide. For years, the far left has zeroed in on local prosecutors and district attorneys as juicy opportunities to make America radically softer on crime. According to recent news reports, for example, one far left billionaire donated more than a million dollars each to the political campaigns of soft on crime prosecutors in Chicago, New York, Los Angeles, and Philadelphia. According to one group's analysis, the army of soft on crime prosecutors supported by this one donor, this one donor, and his networks oversee as much as 20% of the nation's entire population. Once in office, many of these prosecutors set about abusing their authority by basically unilaterally decriminalizing various crimes that neither voters nor legislators have actually decriminalized in reality. As the Attorney General of Virginia put it recently, instead of trying to change the law, these groups are electing prosecutors who simply ignore it. As this liberal campaign has been playing out at the state and local level, we've seen violent crimes surge all across the country. Here are just a few recent news reports from Minnesota. Robberies, assaults, and gun crimes are causing waves of anxiety and fear among suburban residents across the Twin Cities. From Colorado, since the beginning of the pandemic, murders had gone up 47%. Some types of property crime had nearly doubled, and the seizures of fentanyl and methamphetamine had quadrupled in just the last year. Atlanta saw a 30-year record in homicides last year in 2021, and 2022 has been looking actually even worse. At least as of a few months ago, both murders and rapes were way ahead of even that 2021 pace. Residents of Phoenix, who try to use public transit to escape soaring gas prices, have found out, quote, assaults and drug crime in and around public transportation have risen over the last five years. Philadelphia is reporting an 80% increase in assaults aboard buses. In my hometown of Louisville, we're struggling as well. Over the past several years, violent crime has sharply risen across the city, breaking gruesome records, including record homicides and assaults, and we've, been, and we've seen carjacking more than triple in the last five years. Last weekend alone, last weekend alone, Louisville saw three homicides and 10 non-fatal shootings. Five teenagers and a nine-year-old were shot during a single altercation at my hometown's Big Four Bridge. 
violent criminals turned a popular attraction for families and tourists into a literal war zone. Stable prices, border security, and public safety are three of the most basic deliverables that any government owes to its citizens. Strike one, strike two, and strike three for Democrats at the federal, state, and local level. That explains one last headline I'll mention this morning. Americans are more worried about crime than at any other time this century. 